starting to heat up in January and February because the, the percentage that we have to turn the rim, how fast we can turn the rim and our pricing, right? So again, our competitors have one price that they fix for the entire year. They rely on Airbnb smart pricing system. What's wrong with that? Airbnb pricing system is also, to me, I believe is biased because Airbnb is just trying to get people to book as much as they possibly can so they can collect that 3% booking fee. So if whoever probably presents better and have better pricing, they book that. So your smart pricing don't really mean much, right? So we use a third party software that do more than that. So we don't rely on smart system, we actually turn that off and we use a third party software that syndicated with everything out there, including home, how much hotel is charging, what's going on in San Jose that day, what conventions, what company having events, is there a concert, the room rates, how high it is, what's availability of the room, and our pricing adjusting based on that. So that person can be booking Thursday for $70 and the next day is $120. They can go out and look for $120 somewhere else, but they're not gonna get where they get in here. So they end up have to book with us, right? So that's how pricing optimization work. If hotel can do it, we can do better. And, and why we can do better if we provide more for less, right? All right. Um, so that's based on gross revenue. So this one here it shows you what the average daily are um, for for this the last twelve months. And again, going back, this is based on the current and the previous, right? So you can see that the change is basically based on demand. So I'll show you guys this slide so you can actually dissect it a little better. But this is one of the model, the experience that we're performing. So this is a three bedroom, two bath, roughly about 1,200 square feet per day? Yeah, the whole is roughly 1,200 square feet and only you know, three beds to that. Three beds to that. So we are, we have a property that is right in a location that I would say six dollar Uber ride in Santana Rome, okay? And it's in the middle of three major hospitals, okay? And of course you know that that there, there's a tech hub is surrounding Cupertino area in Santana Rome and Campbell, right? And then we're surrounded by three major hospitals. Surprisingly, uh, 65% or more of our guests are female and predominantly are in high tech and travel with nurse. So they stay in this home. And usually on a, um, so this is our kitchen, that's what it look like. We supply everything you can think of that a person needs in the house, okay? From a toaster all the way to measuring cup, all the way to coffee maker and things like that. We provide a comfortable space. In a typical rental, uh, traditional market, you charge for the bedroom, right? Three bed, two bath. So the going rate in the area is $3,500 a month. And that's exactly how much we pay the landlord for. And this is our syndication, this is our master lease. We actually rent it from the landlord. So we propose the landlord on this board of model. She's like, you know what? I don't want to have it. Why don't you just do whatever you do and just pay me $3,500 a month? Uh, previous rent, she collected $3,300 and we paid her actually a little bit more. And we told that we're going to be a better tenant because we're corporate tenants. We pay on time. We have, we have proof of fund that we can way over for payment for her. So, just a typical home, right? And when she went to us, we had a three bedroom, two bath. But what we learned is that, hey, I'm not going to make money in the living room. But the only way to make money in the living room is by putting bunk beds. <laughs> so, this, this living room here has four beds. And generating for us on average of three thousand a month, just a little bit. Our bunk bed is running between nineteen dollar to twenty nine dollar, depends on the season and availability. Okay, we have people fighting to stay here. Uh, the travel nurse, the high tech people, they just come here. They just need a place to sleep, right? Uh, a clean space. So basically, this is exactly what you see every time a guest check in. Um, it's comfortable mattress, they're memory form, uh, comfortable pillow, and a welcome basket with enough goodies or you know, towers and 
and, and the things that they need for their stay. So, and we have a room that we break it up into two full bed. And these allow a you know, group of people, or two people travel together on the job. So they can actually book a private room like this with keypad entry and they can come in and share the room with their partner. So that's one of our model. Okay. So who's interested to see the numbers for this property? We're gonna break it down by understanding the numbers and the feasibility of this one. So a lot of people that think about in this business, they, they oftentimes miscalculate on the cost of utility. And if you think about expanding this business, right? I know some of you are looking to get into this business. You know, if you think of doing it yourself, I don't recommend that. Okay, even though my own Airbnb, I don't manage it myself. I have the team, the company to do it. Okay, you have to have the bandwidth to do so. So if you're looking to get in a short-term rental, do all the due diligence, do all the calculations after deducting the cost of utility, cost of insurance, cost of uh, everything you think of, property management. And if you still earn more than your regular rental, then do it. Okay, so as I mentioned, this property is running at 3500 a month on the market. Regular rental, so let's do computer analysis to see if this can make sense, right? So let me go ahead and open up the financial calculator. And by the way, I can email everyone a copy of this calculator that I put together. It's a very simple math, okay? Okay. So we mentioned earlier really it's a master lease. So I didn't purchase this property. I'm gonna go after a calculation of what if I purchase it, how much I'm actually gonna perform if I do purchase it. So, and I actually do have a property that I'm purchasing right now and I can show you that model as well. So our company do three things. We buy it, fix it, rent it, or we master lease it, and we, we, we rent it, or we manage it for our investor. So that's our three business model. This is three things that we're doing right now. Uh, so this one is a master lease. The address is 524 Irving. So, as I mentioned earlier, it's a three bedroom, two bath. And the problem with this home is that the bathroom is inside a master and that's very typical, right? So now you're only down to uh, two private rooms, a living room that has four beds in there, and everyone has to share a hallway bathroom. What's the problem with that? Everyone's gonna fight for that bathroom early in the morning. So we convert the use of the room. So without moving any walls, without any violations, we just turn the master into a common area. And now the bathroom can be used and shared with everyone in the house. Okay, so that's reversing the use of the master without moving any wall. The only thing you do is remove that door. That's it, and you just take it off the hinges. So, the living room, we put four bunk beds in there, and our going rate on average about $29 a night, okay? Night plus $29 in here, and I'm using, let me bring this to 30 days for now so you can see the projections. So assuming if I do rent it out for an entire 30 days, Okay, which this property running at what, 92% um, 90, occupancy? Yeah. So 92% occupancy. So assuming that I'm renting out all 30 days, okay? I'm gonna adjust the value in just a second, but right now, the, the living room is performing at 870 a bed, okay? And the private room, there's two private rooms, and we're charging $65 a night, okay? And now each private room will perform at 1950. And again, what I mentioned to you earlier, somebody did a study that, the average rate of one bedroom apartment, and that's one bedroom apartment, is about 2100, right? So I'm, I'm very close to that with just one bedroom. And there's homes that I actually perform better than this. Um, the second uh, senpai in the master, so it's, instead of convert the, the use of this, so this house has a, a detached garage. So what we do with the detached garage is we turn it to a common area. Like Playroom or study room, we have a TV in there, we have an entertainment system, uh, allow them to use that, that, that kind of their own space. So we turn the master into two loft beds. So the two loft beds, and people are okay sleeping in the living rooms, they're okay living, sleeping two beds in the master. So we have two loft beds in there that have, the loft beds are the one you sleep on top and you have a table at the bottom. 
to do your study and do your work. So we have two bunk beds in there, and each bunk bed will be charging $39 a night. And assuming that we're doing 30-day rental, all fully occupied, we're performing, we would perform at 11.70, right? So you go to a second tab, is where you would judge, you, you can manipulate the numbers, okay? This is how we have to furnish it. So the entire home costs us about eighteen thousand five hundred to furnish the entire home. That's buying all the couches, the beds, mattresses, everything you can think of, pillows, and whatnot. Okay. The utility costs running on the average about three hundred dollars a month. The internet costs about hundred dollars. The insurance roughly about two hundred dollars a month. Okay. The consumables are running at hundred dollars. These are the things we provide, like coffee or. Um, salt, pepper, and things like that. So those are things we have to refuel a little more often, so they're running about $100 a month. Our management fee is 20%, okay? So we plug that in too, okay? So that's for you to understand if you were to hire us or anyone out there, the going rate between 20% to 25%. So what's in that management fee? We take care of all the cleaning, basically. So we take all the, the number one important thing about Airbnb is the guest experience, and that is in the cleanest, how clean your space is, you know, your pillow and things like that. So uh, the comfortability. So we take care of all that and landscaping costs and your monthly recurring costs running about 2700 Now, I'm saying that we right now, let's just be conservative. Let's just say I have six day vacancy of every month. Okay, so I'm gonna plug in 24 on average. Okay, but I know that my daily ADR can go up to as soon as the whole entire home. You see how my entire home right now is only the, the whole Santa Clara County standard on average by breaking that into that model. Okay, so now let's constrain that to 24 days. And now I'm having six day vacancy. Um, I'm charging at least two nights minimum. Airbnb host fee is 3%, so let's really understand how much that host fee can cost as well. And Three months to ramp up. What's ramp up? The first two months that you have the property on the market, you need ramp up period. You need to advertise. You need to not only just air you, you gotta put on Google ads, you gotta put on social media, and you gotta give a discount. Right? So people will see, oh, 25% off, okay, I'll book this. And when they book it, they enjoy your space, they have a good experience, they come back. So we usually give 25% discount on the first month, 12% on the second month, and the third month we're running fully ramped up. So after you input all that constraint, you get this report. And it's 24 months report. So going from top down, in the first month, of course, you give 25%, okay? Um, your cost of, um, your total revenue in 30 days, if you were to run a whole entire 30 days, is about 7,400. And vacancy, so let's skip the ramp up, let's go over to see if you hit your projection, what, what number would that look like, okay? So, in month three, if you were to run 30 day rental, every day, everything booked out, you get about 9900 but because we constrained it, six day vacancy, so six day vacancy is gonna cost about $1,900, okay? The 3% Airbnb host fee, roughly about $238, so your adjusted gross about $7,700. Now, let's deduct out all the expenses, the recurring costs, right? So you got a utility cost, you got internet cost, technology parking, it's actually insurance cost, uh, laundry, okay, mines, soap, detergent, things like that, okay? And then the management fee, okay? Even here, the landscaping cost. So right now you're netting roughly about 53, 57 a month, okay? And the, the tax 14% reserve is, you know, the city like San Francisco right now, they're enforcing the, uh, what's called hotel tax fee. Uh, so you have to pay for that. So we put this 14% in there for the property owner to kind of look at it in case when city sound they say that you have to stop paying for the hotel tax fee, what that number might look like. So we put that in there so you can see that. That's off your um, gross, right? Off your gross, correct. Okay, so going back, if you are now performing at 5,300 net a month, you are performing 53% above regular rental market based on this model, okay? You, you, we literally rent this home for $3,500. So you can see our, our, our margin right there. And if you not renting this property, you own it, then you based on the calculation of your costs, basically, how much you pay for the mortgage and whatnot. 
Anyone have a question at this point? Yes. Why are you paying insurance fee if it's a rental? Okay, uh -huh. good, good questions. So insurance can be a little complicated because you know when you step into this arena, uh, unfortunately a lot of insurance companies they talk, they have no idea what they're dealing with it just 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 yet. So there's more and more Airbnb insurance type of insurance company out there right now. The um, the type of liability protection in your regular homeowner insurance is not enough to protect the guests. But um, there are companies right now who are running at a higher cost. They do have better protection. So I, I'll be more than happy to share with some of that company, but the cost is a little bit more. And that will protect your guests just in case something goes wrong during their stay. But if you look at through certain channels, Airbnb is very good with this. They have a million dollar policy over your property for liability purposes. So, and they're very good, by the way. We have a lot of incidents that we contact them and they'll take care of it, everything within a matter of week. Um, there's um, other protections such as, you know, lost, stolen items and things like that, and Airbnb take care of those too. So insurance, um, to make sure you have a pro good insurance policy or the proper insurance policy for your home. A lot of people don't have the right policy. They have the hazard insurance, and that doesn't protect your guests. Um, at this moment also, I want to bring Lauren up to talk about three systems that we integrated with. So, 80% of the people on Airbnb right now, they're on a single channel. And they're only on Airbnb. But what we learned is that there's a major, there's a large percent of booking are coming. There's big players like Booking.com, Expedia, TripAdvisor.com are coming into play. So they are now offering short-term rental services, booking uh, services. So with this, you need a software, a third-party management system where a regular homeowner with just one bedroom or a house cannot, well actually they don't even let you use the software in less than like 32 listings or uh, X more listings. Can you talk about guest just yeah. a second? Yeah, so um, currently our company, we use this uh, three platforms for the owners. My for the owners, uh, for the channels, and for the price optimization. So what we use for um, channels, something called Guesty. So what they do is that they um, they don't just push the listing on Airbnb only, but they push it on to Booking.com, TripAdvisor, um, Expedia, and uh, if, if it's international, then there's Agoda too. I'm sure you guys know that when you guys go to Europe and Asia, right? And um, as you know, Booking.com, Expedia is still top two in the travel um, in terms of travel sites, right? And they own a bunch of subsidiaries. Mm -hmm. So right now, for a traditional Airbnb host, they're only limited to the user only on Airbnb. But now, with, you know, with Guesty, you're able to put out to every traveler in the world. So um, for the Airbnb that we had just show you guys, we were getting professors from uh, Switzerland, Netherlands, and like people from Europe booking the whole house, and they're staying up for two, three weeks for a project, you know, a research study in Canada and stuff like that. So it's to show that for the bookings, for the vacancy that you're not getting with them. Uh, sorry, the office you're not getting with Airbnb, it allows you to get that uh, those days with booking a phone and, and speed and TripAdvisor. So, um, you know, on average, you can see that with Airbnb, you're getting about 60%, 62%. Uh, Booking.com will fill up those days, and we I think that um, for some properties, we went up to 92 because of Booking.com. And, um, you know, with Guesty, they allow you to do that because you don't want to have like 20 apps open, you know, just to communicate and stuff like that. So, Guesty is a channel manager for you use and it brings back um, all into one portal. So we, we have, uh, you know, what do you call that, uh, VA that sits on the guest feed and they just reply to inquiries, um, all the meetings and stuff like that, and you know, just basically handle the channels. So that's why we use guest feed. And on top of that, they also offer um, another service called Price Labs. And like I mentioned earlier, what they do is that they they don't try to push you like Airbnb does, but they just drop the prices each, you know, every hours. And to, until they get the bookings, right? For price lab, what they do is that, like you said, they measure all the events in San Jose. So let's say there's a w, uh, WBCC event coming up, and boom, our prices jumped up by 25% a month or a month or two months ahead. And now, you know, we have these guys, um, all these engineers, all for West Coast, uh, East Coast coming in, and they're, they're like, oh, we're staying here for a week for the event, you know, explore SF and stuff like that. So for 80% of the Airbnb hosts, they have no idea what that event is. Even us, we don't even know what that is until, you know, price lab tells us, hey, there's an event coming up, but we're gonna ramp up your price. So that's how you even margin more than 9,000 because we're just basing that on a flat rate number. So there are months where we can hit even beyond that number of the price lap. So that's how price lap come in the picture and help us with that.
So to maximize your income, you really gotta make sure you expose your listing through all possible channels there is. And it's really difficult to do that when you're not utilizing a property management company. That's the whole reason why we found this company because we understand that um, if you just sit there and publish your listing on Expedia or all the whatnot, you have five, six calendars to do with. And you need syndication. So meaning that if someone book here, it has to block out over there. And the pricing has to be uh, automatically optimized. It can't just be waiting for you to get on, log on and say, okay, it's Christmas, maybe I can raise a few bucks. But the system has to do all that automatically. So um, we spent a lot of hours and time into the back end of it to understand. So Guesty is basically a third, is a third party channel management software. It brings all, basically it's, it's basically one push. Everything you do through, it, through Guesty, it will push out to all the other channels. Okay, and uh, PriceLab take all the listing down and it does all the pricing optimization automatically. So that's the two things that we use and we also use another software called PropertyWare and that's a, a very traditional software that we use to uh, give the real estate investor, the owner of the portal uh, that they can log on and see every single expense, every receipt that we spend. If my team go out buying something for $30 for Home Depot, we have a receipt for that. So that way the owner can log on and see all the expenses that month. Um, and any repairs done, anything like that, they can also access all that as well. So um, if we, how much time do we have? We're about 30 minutes, but I want some time for questions. So. Yeah, so right now let's just open the floor for question and answer. Uh, I, I'll be more than happy to share this calculator with everyone. And um, if you ask asking, okay, any question, so we just, yes. Are there any actionable steps that people who don't have any experience in the field can do to get started? Okay, um, yes. So the best way is to, to be a guest yourself, and I always mention people, um, go on, if you wanna run an Airbnb at your location, go on Airbnb, go to the map, see what people are charging, what they're providing, read their description, see what type of experience they're offering, how easy it is the check-in process, how clean it is. Book a, house, book a room, stay there, and say, okay, can I provide better, right? And utilize that number of the finding that you found, go back to my Excel spreadsheet, plug in that ADR, and see how much you can charge, and it makes sense. So it's all start from there. And how I get started in the Airbnb really just start renting out my in-law unit. And so I have an in-law unit, and I'm like, uh, one day I, I had to convince my wife, say, honey, I'm gonna put my, my room in for Airbnb. She's like, what, some stranger gonna walk through the home? And it just go back to that the idea of the first day that you're booking Uber, right? All of a sudden, you, you, your car arrives and you, you go in someone's backseat and someone's stranger and, and you know, like, hey, do you have a badge, you know? And then all of a sudden, you, 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 you kind of accustomed to it, right? So that, to me, you gotta overcome that first hurdle to understand what's available in your market area to your property. And another thing we offer is that if you are interested in renting a house out for Airbnb, we'll go to your property and give you a free assessment. So we'll go there, we're like, okay, this is how much people are charging in this area. And using our Excel spreadsheet, this is how much you potentially can make after two months of ramp up and things like that. We'd be more than happy to write that down. Any other questions? Personally, I probably not be 